Professor Bawendi, uh, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to sit with us. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about quantum dots? Uh, quantum dots are uh, tiny particles of semiconductors that are so small that the properties of electrons in them are determined by the laws of quantum mechanics. And because of that, uh, the properties of quantum dots are nothing like those of the atoms or the big crystals that eventually um, they grow into. How did your work in the 90s impacted the development uh, of quantum dots and then nanotechnology in general? So in the early 90s, when I came to MIT, um, by necessity, we had to invent a process of making very high quality quantum dots. And the necessity is we wanted to study the, the physics, this transition from atomic to large crystal. Um, and without having the samples, it was impossible to study the physics. Um, and so we were really determined <laughs> to, to make the best possible samples. And I had an excellent graduate students, uh, Christopher Murray, David Norris, who are my collaborators on this. And you know, we were able to, uh, to develop a process that gave us very high quality material. Fascinating, thank you. What are some applications of uh, quantum dots you hope uh, uh, we achieve in the near future? So um, the dots are already applied as color converters in biology for tagging cells or for imaging in, in vivo and certainly in displays. Um, they could be used in solar uh, harvesting, also energy harvesting, in many different ways, either through photocatalysis or through direct absorption and, and re-emission of light. Um, they, they have a potential to be useful in the next, I, I would say, decade, because it's very hard to predict when that something becomes truly a technology in uh, quantum information um, through the emission of very interesting kinds of light. The community also has learned how to combine quantum dots with other kinds of materials, either organic or nanoparticles of, that are magnetic or semi-metals, to create new what we call artificial solids that have properties that are different than ordinary solids. Uh, these could be magnetic properties or electronic properties. And these could also lead in the next decade to applications but I couldn't tell you which ones. That's okay, we don't have to predict the future, but my next question is also about the future. How do you hope science uh, will change in the coming decades? That's an interesting question. How will science change? Well, you know, one of the things that worries me about science is that um, there is a, uh, a growing sentiment that um, somehow science may be nefarious or that um, science is not to be trusted. And um, I hope that uh, we can somehow change this because science has been so important to progress, to human progress and to human health and human well-being that uh, to have the feeling that science is on the wrong side of history is something that I worry about a lot and I hope that that changes in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, my last question is, what advice would you give uh, young people in science today? Um, my advice would be to stay curious. Um, as long as you're curious and enjoy what you're doing, you're, in the, you're on the right path. Wonderful, thank you very much. You're welcome.